Well, today in Arizona, a 77-year-old man took his first free step, his first free breath in 38 years. Of course, people leave prison every day in this country, but what makes this moment extraordinary are the twists and turns that preceded it, the double homicide, the ex-wife's accusations, the desperate decades spent trying to prove innocence. ABC's Dan Harris has been following this story for years and brings us the very latest in this Nightline Investigates. looking at Bill McCumber's first breaths of freedom after serving 38 years for a double murder he says he did not commit. It's the big day, this family day. This scene, the culmination of an astonishingly nasty fight between McCumber and two powerful women, his ex-wife and also the governor of Arizona. Late today at his first news conference, no. McCumber cried when talking about the lawyers who fought to get him out. Excuse, excuse the emotion but I'm here because of all these people. So I wouldn't be here without them. In the 1970s, McCumber was convicted of killing two young adults and leaving their bodies in the Arizona desert. We first started covering this story in 2010 when we met Bill McCumber's son, Ron, who had been raised to believe his dad was a monster. Not long before we met him, though, Ron got a call from a lawyer with the Arizona Justice Project, which works to free innocent inmates. He says, no other way to tell you this. We think your father's innocent, and we know we're pretty sure your mom framed him for it. At the time of the arrest, Bill and Carol McCumber's marriage was falling apart, and Carol was working at the local sheriff's office where she had access to the evidence. I don't have any doubt anymore that my mom did this, that my mom framed my dad for the murders. Did you frame your husband? No, absolutely not. Back in 2010, we managed to track down Ron's mother, Carol Kempford, at her home in Olympia, Washington. I did, didn't wake up one morning and say, oh, gee, I think I'll go frame my husband today. And I passed four polygraphs, and I'll be happy to take another. But I did not tamper with any evidence. The notion that your son would say that you're capable of, of acting in such a diabolical fashion, that's kind of, it's a, it's a, it's a damning statement. Ron, oh boy, I don't know if I want to get into this. Ron always has been a follower. You're saying he's gullible? Um, critical thinking is not one of Ron's better skills. What can I say? And if anyone was ever made for Bill to mold and manipulate, it'd be Ron. Let's say I am gullible and my father is manipulating me. Please explain to me how he's manipulating the Arizona Justice Project and everybody else who believes in his innocence and is fighting to get him out. There was another group that believed Bill McCumber's story, the Arizona Clemency Board, which in a rare move unanimously recommended his sentence be commuted, saying, quote, an injustice has been done in Mr. McCumber's case. The board pointed out that another man, Ernesto Valenzuela, confessed to the murders, something the jury was never allowed to hear. Went to effect. Even though Governor Jan Brewer had handpicked the members of the clemency board, she rejected their recommendation and refused to speak about it with us or the family. Governor, my name is Dan Harris. I'm from ABC News. So Ron and I showed up unannounced at one of her press conferences. We've all been asking why. Why won't you release him? Well, you know, it's an unfortunate situation that governors have to make uh, difficult decisions, regardless of what recommendations are made to them. I appreciate your concerns, but I have made my decision, and it's final. All right, guys, we are this done This is your today. executive clemency board, Governor. This is your Thank board. you all very much. Why wouldn't you, why wouldn't you follow the recommendation of your own board, Governor? Is there a political motive here on your part? Absolutely. Desire not to look soft on crime, per se? Absolutely not. But then McCumber's lawyers launched a last-ditch effort to clear his name in court, an effort so strong, apparently, that prosecutors finally agreed to offer McCumber a plea deal, and the judge set him free. Uh, Mr. McCumber, good luck to you, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. At his news conference today, McCumber marveled at how the outside world had so utterly changed and talked about his first hours of freedom. I allowed myself one beer. After 38 years, I was... A little bit hesitant to go beyond that point. <laughs> we just hugged each other. There was nothing to say. This is what we've been, I can't, I can't say it enough. This is what we've been waiting for for so long. McCumber was asked about Governor Brewer. So if you can't say something nice about somebody, don't say nothing at all. So with your permission, ma'am, I'll say nothing at all. 
We tried to get a comment today from the governor, but her spokesman did not respond. We did, however, speak with Carol Kempford. My first reaction was, I, I just, I didn't believe it. Who requested that we conceal her face because she'd recently had a stroke that left her partially paralyzed. I can't convince people that that I didn't frame him. They, they, they are going to believe whatever it is they're going to believe. But I'm here to tell you, they just let a double murderer out. Today, McCumber said both of those things are untrue. If I never hear her name again, it's fine. At 77 and in failing health, it is unclear how much time he has left. But today, at least, it did not seem like Bill McCumber would spend his newfound freedom wallowing in bitterness. Justice, however late, is still justice. For Nightline, this is Dan Harris in New York.